Last class, we started exercise one and we got through to the point where we had collected enough line art imagery to make our jumble. And then we set them up in a Photoshop file. And we finished by saving that file as a PSD format and putting that into our class folder. I've since decorated my class folder a little bit just so it's easy to find. And then it's up to you guys to always organize your files so you know where to find them later when it comes time to print or comes time to, to load your final portfolio. So in my exercise one folder, I have lots of different reference files if I ever need them. But the most important file is the one I've marked green and named with my name. And that's the PSD file with all the layers of the, the five or more images I wanna use. So if I double click on that, it will automatically open in Photoshop because it's already a Photoshop document. Its size, if you remember, is eight by 10 by 300. Mine is 10 inches wide, eight inches tall, but I'm thinking I wanna change that because this jumble looks very jumbled and I think I could use a little bit more height. So not extreme, I'm gonna stay within the format of eight by 10, but I'm gonna make it eight by 10 vertical, not eight by 10 um, landscape format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image and canvas size. <clears throat> this is what grows the, the paper around my image. This is gonna be a little complicated, but I'm gonna make it larger than eight by 10. So I'm gonna make it 10 by 12 inches. So it grows on all sides. And I do that so that I know the shape I want for the paper is within that. Then I'm going to use a new tool for this exercise. That's the crop tool. And the crop tool has options at the top. We practiced this this morning when we were making our icons. And if I wanted my crop to be an exact square, I would make it a one to one ratio. But if I want it to be eight by 10, I'm gonna make it an eight to 10 ratio. So the first, the first number there is the horizontal measurement. The second number is the height. So if I change it to eight by 10 and hit return, it will crop it. That doesn't mean that the image is now eight by 10 inches. It means that the proportion is. So now I can go to image size, resample, and I can change this to eight inches and it will automatically be eight by 10 because that's the proportion I cropped to. There's lots of different ways to resize, but basically this gives me a lot more space to arrange my line art. And I can still grow it, shrink it, tilt it, rearrange it. One thing I wanted to um, review, it was in the last video, but one thing I wanted to review was how to change the color from whatever it was before to just black line. Because we wanna start with all black line. And anytime you wanna save your progress, I just did it, you can go to File, Save, or you can use Command S, and that will update your Photoshop file. So there are some layers I'm not using, like the igloo. And now that I have more space, maybe I do wanna use that. So I'm gonna select that layer and use the Move tool. Maybe move it down a little bit to suggest ice. I'm gonna create a brand new layer by using this layer window icon, it looks like a little post-it note. If you hover over it long enough, it says create a new layer. I'm gonna do that. It will create that new layer above whatever layer you are selected on. And then I'm going to fill that layer with white. This is just to give me a clean white background on everything. In order to fill a whole layer with white, which we will do quite a bit, we go to edit and fill. This is better than using the paint bucket because this way we can guarantee it's 100% white. And where it says contents, we click white in the drop-down menu. 
We'll be filling with black sometimes, filling with gray sometimes, filling with white sometimes. Because what we're creating is an image that is just the black lines. So the white's going to be the background. Because I created a layer that's, shrink this a little bit, a layer on top of the igloo, you see that that white covers everything. So how do I move that down? I want to move it down to the very bottom. And if your layer says background layer instead of layer one, you can just double click on it and rename it. And then you will be able to go behind it. OK, well, Command Z is your friend. And if something goes wrong, you can always click on your history and go back the steps needed. But I'll, I'll check it out really quick. So now I have not only all my layers, but I've got the space to arrange my layers. And I want to go through them, maybe even just one by one, and see if there are any things I need to clean up. So for instance, I'm going to change the color of this one. Or maybe I'll do this one. So if it is, if it has that little icon in the, the layer preview in the corner, a little black box icon, that means it's a smart object. It's called a smart object thumbnail. And in order to erase from it or change its color or get rid of watermarks or do any of that, I need to not have it be a smart object, which refers to an outside file, and instead save all of those pixels within Photoshop to be modified. To do that, I right click on it and I say rasterize layer. To rasterize means to turn into pixels. Now that it's rasterized, I can do weird things to it. I can go to image adjustments, and we've played a lot with levels in black and white, right? But I can also do the reverse. I can go to hue saturation and click on colorize and make it not only lighter, but I can make it different colors. So like our auto draw stuff often came in as a blue, so I'm gonna just turn it into a blue. So how do I change it from a color into black, right? I could even change it into multiple colors. And we'll be learning this later. These are uh, layer effects and layer styles. Up, oh, wrong layer. Here we go. So now that it's rasterized, I can do things like select the white space and delete it. And I would do that not with the, the lasso tool, which we'll be learning, but with the one underneath it, down at the bottom of the drawer, it's called the magic wand tool. And we'll be using this quite a bit. The magic wand tool is a way of selecting pixels that match the one you clicked. And the tool options at the top, you have the option to make them contiguous or not contiguous. So if I check contiguous and then I click somewhere on the white, it will only select the whites within the area where the whites are touching, right? But if I uncheck contiguous and I click on the white somewhere, it will select all the whites in the image. And that's what we want to do. And then I'm going to delete them. Then I can do crazy things like change their, the color over all of it. But what if I wanted to change this back to black? So what I would do is I would go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And because it's a rainbow, the histogram is very even. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the black histogram all the way over. and the output level all the way down. So you can always take things back to just black binary pixels. This is actually called bit mapping, where you only have black or white pixels. That's all there is. So that was a, 
a lot of doing just to to get back to where I started with black. So to delete, you hit delete. And that will just cut things away. All right. So there's another file here. It's the Kurt Vonnegut signature. And I need to rasterize that. Because eventually I'm going to be deleting all those whites from it. And again, I can use the magic wand with contiguous turned off. And once they're selected, I can just hit delete. So if I want to be really thorough about it, I can just go through each layer with the magic wand and delete all the white. And then it doesn't matter if they're on multiply mode or not, because all we have are the black pixels. Now, how do you deselect how do you get off of it once you've selected and deleted you can use the lasso tool and just click somewhere and that will deselect but the shortcut for deselect is command d so i'll often use command d to deselect because remember when you have a selection we're going to be working a lot with selections so we're doing these exercises we'll do it over and over again when you have a selection only the things that are in the selection will be affected by what you do so if a tool isn't working the way you want it to, it's probably because you have a little selection somewhere that you're unaware of. So hitting Command D will clear it. Also, you can move selections between layers. And we're going to see how that's really helpful. So selections are not tied to the layer. So now I've got my white background, and then I've got all my line art on top. I've got more than five layers. I want to start playing with it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to show you a few different things. I have extreme differences in line weight, right? They're all line art, but some are a lot thicker than others. So I'm going to show you how once you've cut out your image, you can actually adjust the line weight. It's a lot easier to make things thicker. It's a little bit harder to make them thinner. So let me first show you how to make things thicker. So let me find my thinnest thing, which would probably be this igloo. And I want to make this line weight similar to this line weight. So I go to my igloo layer and I double click, not on the layer preview window, but on near the name of the layer, like on the gray space by it. If I double click, it will open up what are called layer styles. Layer styles are fantastic. They're going to help us with drop shadows and with highlights and texturing, especially when we're doing text and vectors. For right now, we're just going to play with one feature, which is called the stroke. And in, in vectors, this is called an outline. But we click on the stroke, and I'm going to change the color of the stroke to white in the far upper left-hand corner. This is completely optional if you want to change the width. And then I'm going to change the position of that to outside. Now, if I do it with white and then I play with the size, you'll see how the igloo will glow white around it. So if I want to thicken the igloo, I'm going to not make it white. I'm going to make it solid black. But if I want to thin the igloo, I do white and then I put the stroke on the inside of the line instead of the outside. So now I get to adjust it because it's a little too thick. But I'm going to put it about there. And what's great about layer styles and effects, they can even be used on smart objects, but you can turn them on and off just like you would a layer. So you can see what it's like with the thickness and without. OK, now for what I want to thin out, like the tree, I'm going to do the same thing. Double click on it, use the stroke and change it from whatever I last chose, which was black, which would make it look thicker, right? A thicker tree to white. 
And now if I do 